Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Mikko Ohtama. I come from a country called Finland. And I'm here to present you a, a full stack web framework called WebSona. And uh, this is the, uh, I, I would call this is the first, first WebSona presentation ever. So you are going to see all the latest bleeding at ed, ed school stuff what the world can offer you. So be excited. And uh, actually, this is uh, my, my, my background. So I used to do Python, I used to do Plone. And uh, this very morning, actually, it was funny because uh, Facebook reminded me that I have been in a Plone conference nine years ago. And that was the first Plone conference I ever attended. I think it was on uh, Naples. Vienna. Yeah. I haven't been in Vienna, so. <laughs> At least I don't remember. <laughs> okay, and uh, then le le let's let's go a uh, little bit backwards, like the the definition of the problem, or why we need to create web frameworks. Why not everybody is not using Django? And uh, if you don't remember anything else from this presentation, remember this: that uh, I think. The soap guys, the blown guys, and the pyramid guys are the smartest Python developers out there. Like the things like a travel star and the object database and stuff they do. It's it's very clever. And it makes if you use it correctly, it makes you very productive. Like the tools you are using able you to uh, do uh, more tasks in the same time than what would happen if you would be using Flask or let's say even something worse like uh, Java Enterprise, Java Beans or whatever they are called. So productivity means that the code is easier to maintain, it's more secure, it's easier to extend, extend and you actually need uh, less lines of code. When you write, you are saving your fingers and your wrists and uh, Maybe as an old person, you have functional hands left. But uh, it, it, with the pyramid itself, even if, if like everybody loves it, there's a, a problem. So uh, like uh, David was putting out in his presentation yesterday, it's a framework of frameworks or framework for frameworks. It's basically pyramid is aimed for the guys who uh, know everything already about web development, how to uh, create a session, how to do a database migrations, how to uh, create forms. You, you want to choose your own form library and stuff like that. And uh, if, you, if you are just like the poor guy who is not a hardcore web developer, he just wants to uh, make his first application out there, these patterns are not accessible for those because they want to start with something working. They don't want to go out there and evaluate all three form libraries, like what, what's the correct one to use from those. And this means that it's, it's not like Brandon was putting in his presentation, it's not very approachability. It's uh, not very simple because you have options to choose. It's not very easy to learn because the information is uh, out there in different places. And also what, what these guys, they are very technical, so they are not very good in marketing, unlike Django girls. So uh, when you come to uh, this, I, I don't say it's a crappy, but this uh, not so fancy website, it kind of, it's a kind of turn off there. And those are the problems we are going to address in this presentation. So this, this photo is, is from a blown uh, event called Sona Sprint. It happened in Finland 2011. It has nothing to do with the current presentation, but I just put it there so you know what, uh, what it means to be in Sona. And uh, about Web Sona. So we have, uh, I, I have been working on this project since 2015. So it's two years old. Uh, there are some public sites, the most, uh, 
most good example is, is something called token market. So if you want to see how WebSana works, you can go to that site and sign up. We have an active community. Uh, we have a, cha a chat in Kidder, and I know that there are at least two other people on this planet who are using the framework. So we have at least three users. So we are still a little bit baby. And uh, we have a Twitter, which is misspelled. And we have at least 40 followers. So we are not still not, like on the same scale as Pandren was putting Django and Flask. So we have a few, few, more, uh, few more users to come that we can reach the same level of popularity. But it doesn't matter because even if you are not popular, you can still be better. Like uh, millions of flies can be wrong. So the uh, thing is that we are solving different problems. Like at the other end of pyramid, it's like uh, it's very small core, and you need to bring everything yourself. Then you slowly move towards Flask and Flask and Django, and you can get more tools out from the box or more uh, batteries included. And in WebSona, I have tried to go even beyond Django, so that the default, fun default functionality you get out from the box is enough to uh, run your business in a web. So you will get uh, a default team, bootstrap based. You will get the login and sign up, so you don't need to you don't need to start inventing how are you going to log to a website because that's kind of a boring problem, and so on. And the design goals here have been that it's easy to approach, so it actually works out from the box, and you only add your own business logic, and you don't need to do this boring task like login. It's very well documented, and it's actually using a Python 3 feature called type hinting. So uh, if you have ever worked with, uh, oh, actually, how many of you have been uh, ever used type hinting in uh, Python? Yeah, so it's coming, it's coming. It's, it's very fancy. Feature, yeah. Python 3. Yeah, it's built in Python 3. Uh -huh. Python 3.5 actually comes with the, I don't remember the model. Uh, I think it was called type hinting. Yeah. Typing, yeah. Yeah, but you use the new C++, not the one you uh, Yeah. Designed. And yeah, and, and uh, it, with WebSona is a new project, so there's no Python 2. There's only Python 3. Okay. And everything like a Python 3.5 plus. And it's a simple. So uh, you get the default scaffold, how to create your application. So the files are always in the same place. You get the views.pi, you get the models of PI, and so on. It's very secure. I used to work in, I, I, or I'm still working in finance. So I know how to make sure that the Russians don't get in, into your website. And also, uh, is, there's no, uh, this is also a huge uh, disadvantage for Pyramid because it doesn't have a, enough standard core functionality. So uh, building a pack package like uh, admin or uh, sign up on the top of Pyramid is not good because your uh, Pyramid users, they bring different template engines, they bring different uh, session backends and so on. And if you if you try to uh, build a plug uh, plugin on the top of Pyramid, it doesn't work because there's no like the underlying components are not there yet and you need to write the tons of adapters to make it work. And it's like a tons of extra work for basically nothing. And also one way to describe WebSona is that it's like Django, but it doesn't have a too much of the bad size of the Django in it. I was myself, I was a Django developer since 0.96 or basically the first release. I worked for Django sites for 12 years. So I know what's good and what's bad there. And uh, I want to uh, not repeat the mistakes of the history again, or but actually create something better, like uh, what we have learned since 2005, and what better tools we have in our toolbox today. So this is basically what the WebSona will offer you. It's a, a, a pyramid routing, SQL Alchemy models. It has since the two templates, PyTest testing, salary tasks, some job there with the components and interfaces. You have a default uh, deployment uh, playbook with Ansible, and it even has an integration for iPython no notebooks. So you don't need to open your 
terminal for the Python cell, but you can do it straight from the browser. And what WebSound adds on the top of that is that the integration. So we have a package layout, we have documentation, we get the sign up, sign up, we get the social social authentication with Facebook and Twitter and so on. And very important factors that Brandon was highlighting today is that you get an admin interface straight out from the box. So if you create an SQL Academy model, you get the web interface where you can go add and create and delete those objects. And the other way to see, see, see what WebSona is doing, so this is basically the run function which sets up the framework and uh, it's, it's, it's a split up to a, a methods in a subclass. So, so if, you, if you want to change something in WebSona, like you want to change the uh, template engine, you can just go there, there's a function called configure templates. You can override with your own version and bring in your own template engine. Or if you want to use a, a different email backend, there's a function called configure mailer, which you can override and you can add your own uh, mailing package instead of uh, the default that's a pyramid mailer and so on. And in, in web, web Santa core, you get the functionality that pyramid has, but when you start the project, you don't, it's not there, like a default use, like not found and so on. You get the sessions so you can track your users. You can do actually something useful. You get some view configuration and you get the template engine set up out from the box with some useful filters and variables you can use in your templates. Like especially if you deal with the date times, you can actually uh, format them with the different uh, time zones and stuff like that. Then you get the admin interface, which is uh, Unlike in Django, it's based on Traversal, so you can actually have a multiple levels of uh, paths there. So you, you can have a tree. You have an organization, and under organization you have customers, and under customers you have uh, orders. So you can have this kind of flexible patterns there that the Django can't do because all the URLs are hard caught there. Then you get the sign up and social login forms out from the box. And uh, there's a, a new pattern I'm very happy about. It's called a passwordless login. So basically uh, you are using your email address as an ID. And every time you want to log in, you just send a new uh, link to your email address. And it, this does make sense because all the websites have a forgot password functionality in any case, and people are not writing down their password, so they keep hitting that link every time they want to uh, sign up to the web, sign into the website. So it it makes sense. To, oh crap! It makes sense to uh, uh, sense to uh, just uh, make the session last forever, and uh, not give them the passwords in the first place. And that's how if your website gets hacked, you don't leak any passwords because you don't have them. There we go. It also comes with the theming. So it comes with the basic site layout and it has a Bootstrap 3 theme. So what you can do when you install WebSona, after that you can go to a, a wrapbootstrap.com and buy a theme for your website for 10 bucks. So you don't need to hire a designer. It's unhappy as an engineer. And uh, because it bootstrap, it's not like the, the best of out there, but for uh, most of the customers, it's, it's good enough. So you, ha uh, you save the cost, uh, cost of having your own uh, designer doing the all, all stuff. Or, or, or if you have a designer, they can focus on doing actual productivity stuff like uh, logos and stuff like that. And they don't need to worry about how to style a button. Then you get the forms, which are based on Colander and the deform packages. You get uh, this uh, CRUD functionality. So you have a base class that does add, edit, delete, and uh, list your uh, SQL Academy models in. 
your database. You also get some security features, uh, cross-site request for forging protection. It's actually built in a parameter 1.7 now. And you get the throttling. So if somebody tries to uh, approve force your login form with the different usernames and passwords, it will just, uh, after uh, like uh, 60 attempts, it will block the guy. So, uh, and that's very important, like in the modern uh, internet environment where you have a uh, lot of these botnets going around and they will just try to uh, hack any website out there. They don't care if you are a high value target or not. They just come to and uh, push everything you, through your login form. You get tasking. So uh, you can actually uh, have uh, this kind of cron style tasks in Python that do something every day. Or what's very important for a scalable website, you get the delayed, delayed tasks. So that in, in when you are processing a request, you can say, send an email to this user, but do it after the request is complete and don't block third party API call or don't block third party uh, SMTP uh, until the request is complete. So you have a very, a very uh, low uh, response times and everything happens background on the tasks. You get an email and it actually comes with the default HTML email template. So you don't anymore send these crappy looking emails to your customers, but they come with the, like a default logo and footer and so on. And you don't need to uh, also what's actually HTML email is not very simple because most of the uh, HTML fe features don't work in email. So it comes with the default base template where you are, are you only using that subset of HTML features which we know that will work with Outlook and Yahoo and so on. You get the static media. So uh, uh, you, uh, the web sauna builds uh, CDN friendly uh, URLs. So that if you update your CSS file, it will change it in the user browser and you never have a problem that you have uh, your template and your uh, CSS file would be out of the, out of, out of the sync so, so that you're using a old CSS file on your customer browser. And you get the security. So basically I, I mentioned that my favorite thing nowadays is this passwordless thing. There's a SQL alchemy, so you don't get any SQL injections. It has uh, cross-site uh, scripting protection in the templates. Also, it's using a, a SQL tra transaction isolation level. To uh, it's uh, by the default, it sets it's to the maximum value. So you, it's the same as in ZoDB that if you try to uh, write to the same uh, row. At the same time, one of the transactions rolls back, one, one completes, and then it will just uh, retry the HTTP request again. That's what exactly what Plone is doing and why it's so freaking awesome. It comes with the uh, uh, any based configuration files, and because those files are not very flexible, there's a little layer on the top of that that allows you to use includes. So you can have one uh, base configuration file for your site. And then you, have, you can have a different uh, layers on the top of that, like uh, development, production, testing, and so on. And there's also a separate file for uh, secrets, which is basically API keys. And there's a uh, framework support for that, that you never uh, commit your API keys to your uh, repository, but you handle those out of the law. And uh, here you can see actually type hinting into action. So uh, or, or most of the core is uh, type hinted, so it's very easy to read. You know what, what goes in and what comes out. There's a Sphinx documentation. And also on the top of that, there's uh, some custom tools to uh, make uh, documentation for every template you write, for every uh, template variable you use as, using those templates, and all the chains of filters you also use in those templates. So uh, you have a, comple a complete reference of all the stuff you can do with the WebSona. 
and it comes with uh, uh, default uh, Ansible uh, deployment playbook, which means that if you have a WebSona app, you have committed it to a Git repository. You can just uh, take this Ansible command or playbook, tell that, hey, here is my new uh, Linux server, install my app on that, and the playbook will do everything for you. So it's basically a single line, line command and telling, hey, deploy my webson slash pyramid application on this server. So it will go to the server, it will install Postgres, Redis, Engines, and stuff like that. It will run your migrations if you have SQL migrations, and it will set up your email and everything. So it, it's very, very uh, friendly because development is only half of the story. The other half is like the DevOps, like uh, how to run servers. And even if you learn, if you're a newcomer to Python and you learn how to uh, write your first view, and then somebody comes to, you want to uh, make it to uh, internet, and then somebody comes to and says you in IRC, hey, yeah, it's simple, just install Nginx, here is the link, and you go to Nginx website, and you're like, oh my god. So uh, we will just give you this one command, it's, it's like a Heroku, but without Heroku, you, and it works with every uh, every server out there, the digital ocean and so on, that hey, if you have WebSound app, just go and buy a server and it will run there, and it's, it's safe. And that's pretty much about it. So uh, check the website, and what I would appreciate is that if even if you don't intend to use web sauna, come to hang around in the chat, because I, I like when there's a lot a long list of people in the chat, even if they are not very active, because it means that uh, the community doesn't does care, and maybe in the future they will convert to a web sauna users. And if you have any questions, I think I have a little bit of time left. Yes. Okay. So so let's do so that the Nate will ask one question and then somebody else asks a second one. So. Level, yes, it, it, it's on the application level. It used some, some, something called a uh, rolling time window on the top of Redis, which is something uh, I, I didn't come up with myself, but I, I made it a little bit better. So that every time you hit the view, it, it marks it in a Redis that, okay, uh, okay, we get a hit here and here and here. And uh, it looks, it has backlog of, let's say, 60 entries. And when you uh, exceed that during one hour, it says that, okay, this guy is, guy is uh, hitting it this too much, and then it will send the uh, HTTP, uh, the new HTTP code saying that uh, you uh, too many requests or something like that. Uh, three ways what you can do. One is global on the system level, which I recommend because of uh, these bad guys, I know that they have uh, tens of thousands of IP addresses, and with the IP6, you have, I, I don't know even how do you say this number in English, but it's a huge number with a lot of bits, so, yeah, mud load, yeah. And uh, you can't basically anymore block uh, anybody by IP address in this, on today, that's the thing. Then you can, of course, you can do one is by username, so if some, some user tries to uh, uh, request money, like 1,000 times per hour, you know that it, it doesn't, it's probably not real. And there are a couple of other tricks you can do. But it's flexible, so you can add it in your own logic. Yeah. Excuse me? Uh, Ansible what? Yes, it, it, it is actually using, default playbook is using it. But the thing is that, uh, you still need to uh, do uh, secrets outside Ansible, like uh, 
on your own laptop because you are not going to run Ansible on your laptop to uh, run it on your P server. So uh, you need to have some kind of uh, tool for that. I, I don't have a good solution, but I, I know a person who is willing to work with that if we give him enough money. Yes. I, I think the first comment on that wrapper is that this is a temporary, never use this. <laughs> so uh, I think who I, I, uh, who is currently mind uh, is it Michael minding the pyramid? Yeah. He wouldn't like it. I I can. Yeah, I, I know. I, I tried that first and it was horrible, so I made something a little less horrible, but still kind of scary. You don't want to show it to your kids. So uh, for the uh, configuration files, the, uh, my plan is that after, after some sponsorship and funding and stuff like that, uh, move everything to a YAML with uh, Build in a extension and inclusion mechanism and make it also like a standalone so that other Python projects can use it, like SQL Alchemy. Uh, what else we have? Unzip Unzipple itself, but well, Unzipple, they are different play, but you know, like uh, you can use it standalone and not just with your web server. Yes, it's uh, Alembic. Yes and no. Uh, the uh, CRUD base classes are flexible. So you have a CRUD and below CRUD you have a SQL Alchemy CRUD. And I have made a one side which was using only a Redis. And, but it's still uh, something uh, you are probably going to write some parts yourself because I, I, I haven't been using that many of uh, other da databases myself. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's abstract in a sense that it's there, but it doesn't, it has only one implementation at the moment. Yes. No. Oh, it, yes, yes and no. It comes with the default uh, bootstrap uh, HTML files, but we have a one project with uh, some former uh, Berlin-based Blonde developers, where they were developing a client side on React. So I know that WebSound and React work, work well together. Yeah, and I, I think in the long run, the, I, I'm, I'm going to move the whole admin to a React or something else, because it makes sense when you have, well, when you have a lot of data, so you need to like uh, have a all kind of this cool, cool stuff we saw in uh, Lawrence's presentation going around. Yeah. Yes and no. Basically, you are looking at the presenter SQL Alchemy model in JSON, which is the most common problem. And uh, WebSana itself doesn't do it, but there are a couple of other libraries out there which do it for you. And uh, they are integrated on the pyramid level. So uh, whatever works for pyramid, you can use with the WebSana. So it doesn't take an opinion of that, but there are sol solutions for that. Okay, anything else? Thank you for the, a lot of questions. I think it was more, more than I have ever had, so it's good to hear that people are.
Oh, and th there is uh, one one uh, more thing I, I would like to uh, say. I, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Tarek Alam. He was the first uh, WebSona user, and I forced him to go to us through the uh, tutorial. And uh, he is not very well in uh, pyramid and uh, stuff because he has blown background. But uh, he he found a lot of pain points and he suffered for you so that you will have a better life. 